Hello, my dear friends. <clears throat> Gosh, welcome to my channel or welcome back. Um, happy Sunday morning. We have a very, very gloomy one here today. So <clears throat> waking up, got ye old coffee, um, and I have a haul from Bath and Body Works because when I was in store to get the Pacific Asian collection, <clears throat> the day that they came out, no one in the store told me that they were going to drop some new summer candles that evening, but in hindsight, they told me that they didn't know themselves. And that is the case, I find, at least in my store, that the Bath & Body Works employees kind of don't know what's going on until it is actually upon them, um, which is fine, God bless. Um, so I got several of those summer candles. Um, I liked a great deal of them, and I was just complaining about the lack of aquatics on the floor, and I feel like my prayers were answered because we've got some nice aquatics here. Not quite as true aquatic as like Yumi in the Sea, for instance, but still very aquatic leaning, and I am definitely here for it. I'm here for the beachy vibes. Such a wonderful moment to kind of start transitioning over into summer. Um, one of you guys asked me, what do you burn in May? Um, because I think that most people, or at least most of the reviewers I've been watching are like, time for summer, bring out the coconuts. Um, I don't do that so much. I try to reserve like true summer for like June, July, August. But I burn all the way through the August season. Um, especially with like global warming, I just feel as though August is, it's pretty summery. <laughs> it's always probably been, but it is now especially, and to be honest, even September is less September-y than it used to be. Have you noticed that? Um, it's not until super late September where I am at least. Um, and where I've been over the last like, I mean, I even lived in Chicago and in Ohio and even in Chicago and Ohio, like over the last decade, September has gotten hotter and hotter. It's like less fall-like than you kind of would like. Um, anyway, close parentheses on that. I burn summer candles all the way through August all the way, all the way to the bitter end of August. And really only until like the first week of like September or second week do I start kind of transitioning over into some summer slash fall. Um, so that gives me three good like summer months to burn summer candles, which means that May for me is kind of a soft transition. So I'm not going full fledged like Coco Paradise. <laughs> Besides, we just kind of had an escapist tropical moment. Um, if you do that sort of thing in February and March, whatever. Um, and so I'm not like totally ready for that right now, but May for me is a great moment to indulge and to really lean into hard florals. And I know many people have been doing that up to this point, and I think that's kind of a mistake because May, you know, they say April showers brings May flowers. May is the flower month. And then when you think Mother's Day on top of it, for me, May is like, bring out your lilacs, bring out the gardenias, bring out all of the really heavy, loud florals, because now we're not talking like green shoots. We really do have significant um, floral contributions really across the country, no matter where it is that you are. So May for me is hard florals with still some kind of like rainy florals some rainy florals, and I have this beautiful candle. You can't see it off of screen here, but I am burning a candle from Homeworks right now called Jasmine Rain. It is everything, um, and it is so a May vibe for me. You could do it in April too, but like I am loving that. So some, still some rainy, because I'm not gonna lie to you, like I looked, not only is it rainy today where I am, but like I looked and it's gonna be rain for like the next 11 days, like it's craziness. So um, I still kind of have some rainy stuff 
and I want to keep kind of doing that. This is your moment too to bring out some aquatics because with the rain and the aquatics, it like makes sense and it's not like coconut central, but there is still something sea-like or beach-like kind of about the aquatic leaning stuff. So I do do a lot of that as well. Um, and that's kind of, and some soft fruits. Again, not hard fruits. <laughs> you know, these are weird categories. Hard fruits, I reserve for July. July to me, June, July are like the hard fruit season where it's like unabashed blueberry, raspberry, peach, whatnot. And I know, again, some people have been kind of jumping the gun on those kinds of candles. I think that those are more properly June and July. And of course, your watermelons, your melons, et cetera, et cetera. Please take this all with a grain of salt. If you're not like a really locked in seasonal burner, like none of this applies to you. You burn whatever you wanna burn at any moment. And even I sometimes do that. I'll just be like, yeah, this candle doesn't make sense, but I just need this candle right now. You know what I mean? So it makes sense for me. So it's gonna be burned, done, you know? Um, but at any rate. We'll be doing some soft floral, um, soft, soft fruits in May, kind of ramp. It's May is basically for me kind of a, 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 a finish to hard florals and kind of a ramping up into beach and fruits, if that makes sense. But there's a lot of candles that aren't like true beach fruit um, that are great for May. Okay, that was a lot. So um, I am living for some of these candles. Here is the thing. When I did the buy online pickup in store like a couple days ago or a day ago, um, on the website, it very clearly indicated which candles were new fragrances because some are not and some are. That was really helpful. Now, I looked on the website this morning and they've just kind of applied this banner that says just dropped or something like that, you know, or just added, which... Um, did away with the new fragrance banner, which means that I'm not entirely, I'm just trying to rely on my memory from yesterday as to which ones are new fragrances, but I could be incorrect about that. So I just, there is gonna be a little bit of like ambiguity here and conjecturing about which one of these are new. I don't think that there's any of these necessarily that seem number one, out of the wheelhouse of Bath and Body Works, or number two, so unique, so obviously new. I mean, they're all pretty much within the main. And even the quote unquote new fragrances kind of smell like things that we've had before. So it's not like a huge um, distinction necessarily, but I did wanna kind of identify which ones were new. And um, I'm not sure that I can do that properly. Okay, so let's, there is, here is, there is this really beachy collection. Now, to my knowledge, this is a new candle, this Surf Shop. I could be wrong about that, but I thought I remembered Surf Shop being a new fragrance on the list online. So I went ahead and got, I mean, I knew I was gonna get this one anyway. I got it, bought online, pick up at store, and I kept, I hanged on, I, I hanged. <laughs> More coffee. I hung on to it. Although, it seems really weak in terms of strength and throw. So the notes on this one are Oceanside Birch, Sparkling Waves, and Summer Spruce, which um, sounds like a masculine candle if there ever was one, because you've got the spruce, you've got the birch. Birch already kind of leans a little bit like heavy cologne -y kind of. Um, and then you've got some aquatic elements as well. So I was kind of expecting a, um, certainly a masculine leading candle, if not a men's cologne. And I'm happy to say it's not a men's cologne. It is actually quite, it's quite outdoorsy and it's quite fresh and it's quite authentic. It's not, it doesn't have amber in it and it doesn't have like a men's cologne vibe. But if you associate spruce and brute and birch with like something that is already more masculine, then you're gonna consider it to be masculine. It's a lot of spruce. 
Oh, but there's something like fresh and fruity on top. Gosh, it almost seems like at least a pear note, if not like a citrus note, but it's like a soft citrus rather than a sparkling citrus. Or maybe a kiwi. I don't know. It's just got, it's got a really like, um, really fruity, juicy, sweet kind of finish to the spruce. And I think it's really nice. I'm getting less aquatic than you would think. There is something, and I don't want to chase anyone off here, but there is something almost mint-like, mint and salty, both minty and salty, that is, I think, contributing to a kind of um, back note that could be associated with something um, aquatic. A melon, maybe? Is that a melon? It's going to it's going to kill me like trying to identify this fruit because it's obviously not listed. Oh my gosh, when you smell it, tell me what you think. I'm pretty sure it's a fruit of some kind. Maybe it is a melon. Like a watermelon. But it doesn't like come across as like a watermelon candle. I would say that mainly it's that beautiful like birch spruce kind of note. And it's just authentic enough, you know, for it to come across as a fresh tree note as opposed to like a resin or something like that, you know? I really kind of like this candle, but it's it's subtle and I am concerned about strength and throw. I'm not wild about the packaging. I think that this like, cause so, so there's two summer collections that have dropped or two, two summer mini collections. And one of them has this amazing like white lattice um, lid. And then the other ones have this just kind of like phoned in <laughs> metal lid. Um, and these are like textured. I don't know if you can tell, but they're kind of like textured and flaked, flecked there. Um, and they have this very like Italian, Mediterranean, Portuguese, like painted kind of vibe to them. I am so here for it. This looks expensive. This looks premium. This looks like incredible. We're going to get into these. And then there was this collection that was kind of like, eh. and here's for the children. <laughs> um, and it's actually, when you look at it up close, nicer than you would think. So they're like, especially where it kind of goes see-through, it's kind of nice. It's almost a little bit pearled and um, I do have to say the under the sun one was really cute. It had this seascape with the beach sands and the umbrella. And I did think both from afar and close up, it looked so cute. And actually, um, <clears throat> I did buy that one online to pick up in store. And then when I smelled it and reminded myself of that fragrance, I was like, and no, <laughs> not for me. Um, it's just kind of like a really candied banana with like this mineral sunscreen kind of thing. It w goes well with like the concept and the vibe under the sun, no question, but I'm just not a sunscreen girl and I'm not a candy girl. And so that was just, it was, I had to kind of remind myself of what that candle was though. It was like, oh, what is that? Like, it sounds so great. It sounds so like seasonal, but yeah, just really not for me. Although I'm sure it is for a lot of people of this in this collection. I did think the under the sun packaging was the most cute for sure. Um, but the rest of these are just kind of like, kind of cringy, kind of cheap looking, but you know, I mean, <clears throat> It's not the only summer candles in the store. In fact, almost everything in the store looks summery at this point or tropical. So like you definitely have things to choose from. And big, 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 big announcement that I'm kind of burying here in the middle of this video. A little bird told me a source who will not be revealed, but who is very well connected at Bath and Body Works. A source told me 
that Bath & Body Works is actually going to do another true summer collection. And the true summer collection is going to drop either during semi-annual sale or immediately after semi-annual sale. I think they will all be new candles and the word is that it is a destination collection. So um, a lot of excitement actually at Bath & Body Works for that because they haven't had really true summer candles drop that deep into summer um, for a long time, um, if not, not at all in recent memory. So budget accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> and let's all, since there's excitement at the corporate office, I'm, I'm hoping that those candles are actually quite impressive. So, um, this is not the last word that we're going to have for summer for, um, Bath and Body Works. And I'm sure we'll have some other like candle day drops too for semi annual, and we'll probably have some mashups, et cetera, et cetera. So this is definitely not like the final word on summer for Bath and Body Works. So anyway, I got Surf Shop. I do think it is a new fragrance and I do think that it has a great deal of promise. Yeah, it's really fruity. In fact, I would say it's a fruity spruce. And it's so odd that the fruits are not listed on the bottom of the jar. I think a lot of people are going to like it. Even if you're a little shy of like spruce and birch and are thinking this is going to be a masculine candle, definitely give this a smell. And if you can, bring it home and smell it in your home. I have, I, sometimes it's very hard for me to read a candle when I'm in the Bath and Body Works store. There are just way too many other smells like competing and it's hard to get a good read on a candle, especially if it's a little on the subtle side or it's layered. You may only be getting like one layer or one like, you know, aspect of the candle. This is a very bright fruit candle but in a, a fairly sophisticated way, I think with some salt and mint notes underneath. So despite the packaging, <laughs> despite the concept, and despite the list of notes on the bottom, this is actually a fairly layered candle, a fairly subtle candle, and a fairly like well-balanced candle, um, and still well within the main of like the consumer demographic for Bath & Body Works. So um, I am happy with that one, but I suspect it's going to be very weak. Okay, the, um, let me see if I got, sorry, I haven't even opened these up. Okay, so the only other one, so I did buy the Under the Sun um, from that collection and ended up exchanging it for, no one is more surprised about this than I am. Are you prepared for what it is that I brought home? Look at that. If you told me that I was going to bring home a raspberry rosé, I would have been like, stop, it's a joke. Like, you're killing me, you know? There's like no way. On paper, it's a no for me. I don't do the, like, fruity, fruity, tooty Bath & Body Works candles. And I definitely do not do their like effervescent champagne kind of candles. Like some of them I think are horrendous, but even the ones that are executed fairly well, it's just not my vibe. I don't love effervescence, even to like drink. I don't like it when Bath & Body Works does effervescence. Anytime they list a sparkling note, I'm kind of like, ah. Uh. Yeah, it's probably a no for me. And then when they add all the sugar and all of like the fruit, it's just, it's a lot. It is a vibe and it is a very popular vibe for Bath & Body Works. So long may it last. I'm like, I'm not saying that Bath & Body Works should stop doing this. I think they should continue to do it. 100%. It sells well and there are so many people that love it. Just for me personally, not me. And so the, <laughs> the fact that I came home with this craziness, I think this is a new candle. If I recall correctly, ugh, mine has a little like, I just poked it with my fingernail, I think. And now it's like driving me crazy. But I did, if I recall correctly, have to like sift through a lot of these to find wicks that were centrally placed. So I'm going to stick with the 
fingernail poke there. Okay, so the notes on Raspberry Rosé, which I think is new, chilled rosé, sweet raspberries, pink sugar. I mean, and that is pretty much what it is. Um, and like I said, on paper, not a candle that I would like. But man, it is really nice. I mean, if you're look, this is what I would call a hard fruit. I mean, this is June, July, no question, right? I'm not gonna try it here in May. <laughs> but this is a, oh my gosh, we're out at the pool, we're having a barbecue. It's aggressive, it's loud, it's fruity, it's in your face, and it smells like summer. I mean, there's just no question. Um, so this is a hard fruit candle, if there ever was one. It is so pretty. There is something not only fresh and authentic about this raspberry note, which is so unexpected because especially like <laughs> the profile of this kind of candle is exactly the profile of a candle from Bath and Body Works that authentic is not the word that you would use. It's just not. And even if you love this variety, this genre, this like category of candle from Bath and Body Works, authentic it is not <laughs> it is sugary sweet it is candied it does smell a bit synthetic and it often is mixed with something that's also like body carish i mean it's just like i said it is almost a cliche a bath and body works cliche this kind of candle and somehow this one that seems as though it should fit so into this cliche is somehow avoiding it, and I don't know how, but the raspberry note here, oh my gosh, it's just gorgeous. Yes, it is loud, and yes, it is sugary sweet, but there is just enough gorgeous, the, the raspberry note here is dynamic, and it's not just like a raspberry oil, like, or a raspberry, like syrup, the way that you would expect from like an Italian ice or something like that, you know, which is really all that is necessary for a candle like this, a profile like this, where you've got the effervescence and you've got the high sugar and the candy. And all you really need is like a pump of raspberry syrup of the kind that you would use for like a shaved ice. Done, right? And somehow this raspberry note is better than that. It's just better than that. And it jumps out of the jar. There is almost a floral nature to it too. And I don't know if the floral is something which is also added or if the raspberry in fact has kind of a floral cast to it. And there's just enough tartness in it too that this raspberry note is just it's more well-rounded than most of the raspberry notes that you would expect, not only from a candle like this, but also a candle from Bath & Body Works. It's one of the best raspberry candles I think I've ever smelled. And I'm not getting a whole lot of effervescence from it. I'm really not. I'm not getting anything boozy. You know where you have like the champagne toast candle or something and you've got that like bright champagne, like whatever else. I'm not getting any of that. And I'm so happy because it's just allowing that amazing floral raspberry to kind of punch and be the real star of the show. There is an enormous amount of candy sugar all around it. Don't get me wrong. So if you're here for the candy and the sugar, it is definitely there. It's a very sweet candle, but the raspberry is just so authentic and so unexpected that it just transforms that sugar note. Yeah, I am really kind of here for this candle. It's beautiful. And again, I don't think the list of notes really does justice to what it is that you're smelling. I'm wondering if with the rosé, I wonder if they took it in a like, <laughs> in a like, conceptual floral direction and added some actual rose to this. 
I mean, obviously a rosé, like wine, is really just called a rosé because of the color of it. But there's obviously, it's not like a rose beverage. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a great beverage. It's a wine. It's a wine that, that has a particular kind of like um, light pink color, which is why people call it a rosé because it is more rose-like than like a deep red or an obvious white. I wonder if they've added some actual rose in here in lieu of effervescence and alcohol. I don't know. Again, I want you guys to speak to me on this. I'm as surprised as everyone that I brought it home. But if there was ever like a true July candle for the barbecue and for the pool, that is it. I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe, especially as the reviews start pouring in, if I hear bad things, I may return it, but that's what I've got. One that is not in any of these collections, but I've kind of felt badly that I haven't actually tried it. And this one came out in January and I know Kent from Candle Channel loved this one so much. I also love the packaging. I loved the packaging on this mini collection across the board. It is so sophisticated, but also like comforting and cool and creative and artsy. Like it's just, it's really stunning. I love this particular aesthetic. So this is Vanilla Coconut Surf. And it is sweet vanilla, coconut waves, and beech wood. And for me, the reason that I haven't purchased it up to this point is that it's just, well, there may be some musk on the bottom. Um, there was just so much vanilla. <laughs> like, I mean, and like a caramelized, like marshmallow, like vanilla on top, roasty toasty. Now, the more that I smell it, it's almost like you lift the lid and all the marshmallow comes out at you and then it like goes into the corners of the room and then you can like smell the rest of the fragrance. <laughs> and then when I smell the rest of the fragrance, I'm like, oh, this is what I like because now I'm getting the wood. Now I'm getting the musk. Now I'm getting the coconut. Now I might even be getting something vaguely aquatic. Whereas before all I could smell was like, marshmallow toasted marshmallow and I think it's that toasted marshmallow note that scared me off because I'm just I'm not a marshmallow girl and I'm not a gourmand girl and so for me the candle just leaned way too gourmand but I'm loving what's underneath the marshmallow and I think it performs really well and I do love coconut candles I just do and then when you have wood and aquatic on I, it's like all my things the only thing that's missing is like rum or nutmeg, or allspice, or something like that. I'm in that place. Yeah, I really kind of like this candle, and what I like about it is that it does seem fairly bold. There were a few reviewers who said that this was a repackage of Santorini Coast. I don't think that that's the case. Santorini Coast, by the way, is a um, has been offered in this lattice collection, by the way. It looks really nice. Um, and I, so I had the opportunity to smell them both on the floor yesterday. I didn't think it was Santorini Coast. It's not Santorini Coast. I don't like Santorini Coast too much. That said, I have not burned it. So caveats apply there. But there's something like really off-putting in that Santorini Coast. I don't like it. It's like a, it's almost a waxy note or, I don't know, like a sunscreen note or something like that. It's not... It doesn't, it might, depending upon your association, it might smell beachy, but for me, it just seems like a really weird addition to the candle that kind of mars it, whatever that note is, and I don't know what it is. The one note that is different from this in Santorini Coast is the almond blossom, so it could be something almond related in the Santorini, but it smells frankly more synthetic and off-putting than just an almond note or an almond floral note. So I don't know what's up with that candle. It's also weaker than this one. So for those of you wondering, they are similar, but I think I'm, I have not been tempted to pick up Santorini Coast, whereas I have been tempted to pick up this one and I do not think that they are 
um, dupes of each other. So anyway, I'm really happy to have that one. And if it performs well, I will go back for more because I'm really, even if it's basic, I'm really here for a coconut candle that is fantastically executed. Sometimes Bath & Body Works' coconut candles are a little on the cheap side. This one doesn't smell cheap necessarily if you can get beyond that toasted marshmallow note. Um, and then, you know, if we can dig in for like the musk and the and the wood and the aquatic ocean, done. That, it, it has the potential to be a really excellent beach coconut conceptual. Um, okay, so then we have four, four of these lattice candles. I would have, the one I didn't come home with was Turquoise Waters, which is not a new candle. Um, and I actually have a Turquoise Waters that has yet to be burned from like last year. And so I didn't feel comfortable buying another Turquoise Water. But Turquoise Water is so great. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful candle. And this is beautiful packaging. So between us, I will probably go back at some point in a week moment and get Turquoise Waters in this packaging. Um, I am so here for this packaging. Like, I just think it's stunning. Like I said, with this like Mediterranean Portuguese painted ceramic kind of design, I am so here for it. Um, and I really liked a lot of these fragrances too. Look at this one. This has to be the standout right here. Look how stunning. I mean, and it looks painted. It's just not cheap at all. See, this is one of those candles where I look at the bottom and I'm like, oh, it's only $26.95. I just think it looks so premium and so beautiful that like they could charge like 28 for this or something and I would still buy it. Like I, it's that stunning. It's that beautiful. It's that like thoughtful from the lid all the way down. Like it's just perfect. Not enough, not too many words all the colors being appropriate. You know, sometimes they'll like charge a lot for a candle and you're like, why? Like the aesthetic here is just not good, right? I don't, and it's a wraparound and it still looks stunning. It still looks absolutely stunning. And sometimes you just, you get a candle collection like that. It's just a wraparound, but it looks so good. You know, like that greenhouse collection from earlier this year. Man, Bath & Body Works really takes the cake. Like when they nail it, they nail it in terms of aesthetic. Also, Kringle, I'm looking at you. When you do your quote unquote designer painted three wicks that almost all look tacky. Here is an example of how to do a designer painted three wick that looks expensive, that looks appropriate, that doesn't look tacky, that doesn't look juvenile, etc. And it's a wraparound. It's not even painted. Okay. Palo Santo Vanilla. I am so happy for those of you who love this candle that this has come back. Between us, I prefer Palo Santo and Sage because I'm not a huge vanilla person. For me, it's a little bit of a diluted Palo Santo. I would rather just like the regular Palo Santo or Palo Santo Sage, which like bumps up this amazing herbal dimension. But I also lean a little bit masculine and a little bit more rugged. So it's not a surprise that I don't like this one quite as well, but I still love it. And do you know I haven't burned it? Am I wrong? Is the Palo Santo this year a little stronger than it usually is on this candle? I thought I remembered the vanilla being much more loud. It was, it was a vanilla candle with a little bit of Palo Santo, whereas this one seems more Palo Santo than vanilla. Am I wrong? Well, my vanilla folks will be able to tell me if they're like disappointed with it because it's like not enough vanilla or something. Yeah, this seems great though. Sometimes I think about if I worked for the corporate office for Bath & Body Works, I would like to be the CEO of the division, Palo Santo. I will just be their Palo Santo division. <laughs> That's what I will be, okay? I am so here for their Palo Santo note, done. Like, I just think it's the new mahogany teak wood, like, and I think it's 
10 times better, 10 times more versatile, and I am just so here for it. I really am. Not in love with like Bath & Body Works sandalwood note. Definitely not in love with the mahogany note. Um, what other wood notes do they have? They could do a whole lot more with cedar, by the way. Yeah. A whole lot more with cedar. I think they have a pretty decent cedar, and I think that's unexplored. But man, this Palo Santo, it's a cash cow. Let me tell you something. And they have been fairly conservative about the like blends and mashups that they've done with Palo Santo. And I think they need to really like pour the coal on now. Like this is, this is, this is amazing. It's, and I think it's very popular. It's a great note. So they've got the original Palo Santo. They have Palo Santo and vanilla, Palo Santo and sage. I don't think they have any other Palo Santo. It's a mistake. So this fall, what I want to see is Palo Santo and pumpkin because obviously like homeworks stole the thunder on that. Like I said, someone got fired at Bath and Body Works. Like I cannot believe that homeworks like scooped Palo Santo pumpkin from Bath and Body Works craziness should never have happened. Like I said, someone needed to lose their job on that. Palo Santo pumpkin, we have got to see. Palo Santo. Or maybe we should put the pumpkin first so that there's a PP. Pumpkin Palo Santo, PPS, yeah? I think, and obviously not this summer, but now it's gotta be next sunder, su summer, Palo Santo Sands, Palo Santo Sands, and it should be like a Palo Santo coconut vanilla kind of thing. Yeah, maybe a little bit of sandalwood, but I'd, I'd go easy on the sandalwood given that there's a Palo Santo note, right? Palo Santo coconut vanilla, Palo Santo sands. Done. Is anybody watching from the corporate office? You can have it. Palo Santo sands next summer needs to come to the store. Believe me, it will be a winner. I mean, if obviously you've got to execute it correctly, but Palo Santo Sands and, Palo, and Pumpkin Palo Santo are the next two Palo Santo ones that need to come off the press. Like sooner rather than not, maybe I should be the CEO of this division. Like, okay, anyway. We've seen, a, and I, I love Palo Santo Sage, but like there have been a lot of iterations of Palo Santo and Sage on the floor for like the last year. This one was very popular, arguably even more popular than Palo Santo Sage, especially with the vanilla crowd that doesn't do like the more masculine and woody candles as much. And so it was a great gateway Mind-blowing. We needed more Palo Santo and vanilla. Secretly, I am happy that they didn't just give us a ton of Palo Santo and vanilla and then Palo Santo and Sage would be like the little stepsister. So I am kind of grateful for that, that they have invested and committed to Palo Santo and Sage, which is perhaps a better fragrance. Um, but this is very, very important. And and look at that packaging. Please, especially if you were a big Palo Santo vanilla person from before, will you please, and it would be great too if you've got them on hand and can compare them. Doesn't this seem like a whole lot more Palo Santo than there originally was in this candle? I'm happy about that because I would rather more Palo Santo and less vanilla, but I am a little bit concerned about the vanilla crowd. And if it is the case, are they going to find that a bridge too far? I don't know. Anyway, I had to bring one of those home. And do you know I've never actually burned one because I didn't burn it the last time it came out. I said, what's the point? I'd rather just have Palo Santo, you know? or Palo Santo Sage. This is like a diluted version of it and I'm not a vanilla person, but I'm here for this. Okay, this one I believe is a new candle. Look at that. Yeah. I do think maybe they should have done, although I do love the bright stripes here, a different shade to really allow that rose to pop a little bit more. But again, 
just really stunning, right? Okay, so Summer Rosebud, and we didn't really get a lot of great rose candles for um, Valentine's Day this year. Tea Rose, by the, for instance, didn't come out. So this is kind of a tea rose scent, I think. Blush Pink Rose, Vibrant Bergamot, and Fresh Cut Stems. It's a rose candle. And I think the bergamot and the stems are supporting cast. I mean, it is a lot of rose. And it's a traditional rose. There is powdery. It's, it's pretty powdery. Otherwise, I think it does come across as more of a tea rose. Um, you know, one of those rose varieties that's not quite as deep, not quite as... Um, traditionally rose-like, a little bit softer, a little bit sweeter, a little bit lighter. Um, but there is a deep powderiness about this candle, which is very traditional rose. Kent! Oh my gosh, we've got to hear what you have to say about this because I think you're going to like it. It's like a true rose. There is just enough botanical greenery in the after scent um, that makes it palatable for me. The bergamot, if it's here, is a very green bergamot, like think lime-like. And I think it's just brightening up the green botanical stems and um, leaves kind of thing. But don't get it twisted, this is mostly a rose candle. I kind of would like a rose can. I was hoping when it said summer rosebud, that it would have some like briny ocean like vibes to it, but it's fine. That's fine. Um, I'm not usually a rose person, and I am a little nervous, but um, I, I mean, it's not as green as like that that Henry Bendel champagne candle, which is like mostly green. That's pretty much my, <laughs> that's my ratio, <laughs> but. I'm, I'm interested in burning this for sure. And I think this is a May burn for me because it's a hard floral, if you know what I mean. So hard florals will be burned this month. I'm definitely gonna be burning that one. Okay, we've got two more from this lattice collection. One of which is this one, Oceanside Lavender, which I've kind of already showed you a little bit. Look at that. Look at that. Yes. I'm not a huge lavender person, um, so there was a little bit of hesitation there, and it also has a sandalwood note, and don't get me wrong, I love sandalwood, I'm just not sold on Bath & Body Works' sandalwood. It's a strong lavender candle. You have to like lavender to like this candle. There have been a lot of lavender candles that I have burned even over the past like eight, nine months um, that are more like lavender conceptuals where lavender is an aspect um, and even lavender vanilla has so much vanilla in it, for instance, that it really cuts it. This is a lavender candle. What I appreciate about it is that there is still a softness to the lavender so that it doesn't come across as medicinal or so aerobotherapy that you're kind of like, um, yeah, I would only burn this like if I was needing some sort of clinical, <laughs> I don't know, clinical clarity or, or medicinal, like, I, I don't know, clarity for my sinuses or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, this has, like I said, a softness and actually there is just enough sandalwood to kind of cut a little bit of it um, so as to make it like really palatable in your house as a legit fragrance that is still going to give you all of those like pure, clean, spa-like kind of feels but without feeling like you're in a medical clinic of some kind. I am 
There is the barest nuance of aquatic here for the calming waves. You have to really smell for it. And it's kind of like a, um, gosh, it's almost a coconut. There's almost a coconut note in there. Am I wrong? Maybe I'm just manufacturing that in my head. Maybe it's just the conjunction of the lavender and the sandalwood that's kind of like giving me a phantom coconut note. Um, but regardless, there is like a kind of salty, almost mineral sea kelp kind of after vibe on this, but you have to smell real deep to like pick it up, yeah? Mostly it's a lavender candle. Mostly it's lavender and really the sandalwood is there just to kind of like cut its most acerbic um, qualities. Yeah, I'm kind of here for it. There is this sea salt lavender, I think, that Harry Slatkin has. And it has been in a lot of TJ Maxx and Marshalls in my area for a long time. In fact, I just saw one like a couple days ago. And I've almost picked it up, but I haven't. Um, but it's very similar to this candle in that it, it's supposed to have, it's mainly a lavender candle with some like sea salt aquatic elements to it. But from what I can smell on cold from that Harry Slatkin candle, there is like hardly any aquatic notes in it um, because conceptually I think that's fantastic and I would like more aquatic and less lavender. <laughs> Just a little bit more of a balanced candle. Um, this one is not particularly balanced either but it's more balanced than that Harry Slatkin one is. Um, and there are a few more obvious elements in it even though it is a profoundly lavender candle. And I think the lavender note here is a little bit better than the lavender note that Harry Slatkin has given us, which is a little bit for me too cool to aromatherapy. Bath and Body Works has a really nice lavender note. It's not quite the lavender note that's in like lavender vanilla or pink lavender and espresso, which I think is their best lavender note. Um, this one is a little bit more austere and a little bit more herbal. And I think it's appropriate given that it's like a true lavender candle and it's the star of the show. Like I said, if you don't like lavender, I would not even, I would not go for it at all. Okay, last but not least, this lovely right here with the fishies. Sea salt and sails. Look at that candle. Look at that candle. I'm just so proud of Bath & Body Works right now. I just really am. Oh, it's so pretty. It's so, like, the concept works. It's like, yeah. It feels good, too, because, like, with, like, the Asian Pacific candles that I thought were just so phoned in in terms of their aesthetic, and even, like, the Black History Month candles, which otherwise I thought was a really great collection, I thought was hobbled by a very bad label aesthetic, you know? And that's what it... A candle like this, you will buy even if you're not entirely sure about the fragrance. That's the difference, right? Whereas like that Black History Month collection was so on point and I don't think enough people purchased it because I think that the aesthetic and the marketing was just not where it should be. Like it's, those are candles that you just don't even see when you're in the store. All right, Sea Salt and Sales. Apparently this is not a new candle, but I don't know that I've smelled it before. Ocean Sea Spray, Aloe Vera, Nectar, and Driftwood. Yeah, this is an aloe candle. And it's kind of nice because it's an answer. Kringle had an amazing aloe-ish candle um, in Greenleaf. And of course, Yankee had a very successful aloe candle this year in Aloe and Agave. And I had a hard time trying to like think of a candle at Bath and Body Works that was comparable, yeah? This is the one. And I either had not smelled it before or, yeah, I mean, it's a strong aloe candle. What I like about it is that it is a little more on the salty side than on the sweet side, which makes it like even more aquatic, like in almost an ocean way, as opposed to just aquatic in a generic way, yeah? Driftwood. 
Yeah, I think that there's some muskiness, but I don't know that it's like enough true wood. So I think it might be a driftwood, like conceptual, that's just kind of like a masculine leaning musk um, underneath. It's mostly aloe. Like that kind of like green aquatic. It's kind of warm at the same time as being cool, if you know what I mean. A little tiny bit fruity, a little tiny bit floral. You know what I mean? And like I said, um, what I appreciate is it's got that like brininess to it as opposed to a runaway sweetness. I mean, it's definitely Oceanside. And that's just so fantastic. I would not have minded a little bit of like um, mossy, earthy seawood, seaweed kind of um, herbalness, but I think it would might have made it a little bit more, less mainline and a little bit more off-putting um, to a general audience. Yeah, that's a really nice candle. And it's gonna be a great like palate cleanser too. Um, if you've had too much cocoa paradise or whatever else that is, or hard fruits or whatever in the summer, this one is going to be really great. Um, cause aloe just kind of does that. It kind of cleanses your palate. It gives you a little bit of an aquatic spa moment. Um, and this one is very briny, very oceany. It's less botanical green than um, green leaf is, for instance. And even, I think, less green than aloe and agave is. And I would say it's even more aquatic and more briny, which makes sense given its concept, given its marketing. I'm happy. I'm happy with these summer candles. Like, it takes me to that place. I am definitely... I think I'm going to do this one. Oceanside Lavender and sorry, I'm just getting so congested. I don't know why because I feel like when it rains You should have less pollen. Oh um, And I will also be doing this one for sure during the month of May. It's like a hard floral um, I will probably Do vanilla coconut surf too as soon as possible either now or in early June because I want to be able to buy more of them if I really like it. Um, I should probably burn Palo Santo vanilla too, just because if it performs really well, I'm getting more of these in this snatch packaging. Raspberry Rosé is definitely a July burn, so I'm going to be holding off on that one. And this one is a little bit of a wild card. Because it's a real fruity spruce. I'm not really sure when. I don't know if there's a season that feels right for me about this one. And it is very unique. Maybe I should burn it now. Maybe I should burn this down. There's a subtleness to it, which seems like it may be more spring-like than like hard summer-like, yeah? And also, I just want to, if it is truly a new candle, like, I really think that we need to have more information about it. So, yes, we will burn that one, too. So, on the on-deck circle, we have Palo Santo Vanilla, Surf Shop, Summer Rose, and Oceanside Lavender. And Vanilla Coconut Surf. Really, the only two I'm kind of holding on to for the summer are these two. Ooh, and I like these two because I think they're kind of a little bit transitional in terms of beach, like summer can. Like this is what I'm talking about with May. Like these seem transitional to me. They don't scream July, August. If I had stayed with Under the Sun, that would have been like a screaming summer candle, right? Oh, and yes, Under the Summer, Under the Boardwalk or whatever that candle has just come out too. 
I don't love the packaging too much. I think it looks kind of cheap and juvenile, but like, you know, that might come with the territory. And I know a lot of people are going to be happy to see it. So there is that. I have never burned that candle actually. Um, and I have to be honest, when I smell it, to me, it smells like a September candle. I think it's because it's got the strong apple and the caramel. And for me, caramel and apple, I guess for some people, it's like fair, like, you know, but I don't know. I, I grew up in Ohio. Like the Ohio State Fair is like in August. Um, so it's it's real late summer. And for me, caramel apples are more of a September, October association than a summer association. And I know there's supposed to be, there is kind of a little bit of a popcorn nuance too. But again, is popcorn really just a summer or beach association or is it also more of a like cozy fall thing? I don't know. Close parentheses. I've always thought that boardwalk candle for me smelled more fall than summer, but I, even if it does like objectively have more of a fall association, it's just because of Bath and Body Works and because of the way that they've marketed it and the season that they've brought it out in. For many people, the association is summer because that's when the candle comes out, regardless. Okay, that's what I've got for you. I really enjoyed that. I know that was a long video, but like I'm kind of living for some of these candles and I'm definitely living for the packaging. All right, I'll link all this stuff down below, but you know where to find it. And I think the $12.95 candle sale is still going on here on Sunday. So check it out, place an order, go in and smell. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.